Chapter 4 of The Power of Awareness by Neville Desire The changes which take place in your life as a result of your changed concept of yourself, they always appear to the unenlightened to be the result, not of a change of your consciousness, but of chance, outer cause, or coincidence. Right? <clears throat> you didn't do that. You didn't know that that was going to happen and that was going to happen. And you know what I mean? That whole um, material assistance from unforeseen. What is this quote right there? You know, that no man could have predicted, you know. However, the only fate governing your life is the fate determined by your own concepts, your own assumptions, for an assumption, though false, if persisted, will harden into fact. The ideal you seek and hope to attain will not manifest itself, will not be realized by you until you have imagined that you are already that ideal. There is no escape for you, except by a radical psychological transformation of yourself, except by your assumption of the feeling of your wish fulfilled. Therefore, make results or accomplishments the crucial test of your ability to use your imagination. In other words, put it into practice. Everything depends on your attitude toward yourself. That which you huh, see, cry of the hawk says, yeah. That which you will not affirm as true of yourself can never be realized by you. For that attitude alone is the necessary condition by which you realize your goal. All transformation is based upon suggestion. And this can work only where you lay yourself completely open to an influence. You must abandon yourself to your ideal as a woman abandons herself for love. For complete abandonment of self is the way to union with your ideal. Let go of the old self, the old you, to literally make the space to subscribe, to, to manifest, you know, two things cannot occupy the same space at the same time. Abandonment of the old self so that the new self may emerge, may take hold, may exist in those little nuanced, little spaces, little micro moments of our everyday because that's what makes up life. Those little micro moments, those little mini victories. You must assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Okay. You must abandon yourself to your ideal as a woman abandons herself to love for complete abandonment of self to it is the way to union with your ideal. Know what I'm saying? Right? So you must assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled until your assumption has all the sensory vividness of reality. You must imagine that you are already experiencing what you desire. That is, you must assume the feeling of the fulfillment of your desire until you are possessed by it. And this feeling crowds out all other ideas from your consciousness. The man who is not prepared for the conscious plunge into the assumption of the wish fulfilled and the faith that it is the only way to the realization of his dream is not yet ready to live consciously by the law of assumption. Although there is no doubt that he does live by the law of assumption unconsciously. Man is not ready to live consciously by the law of assumption. He is not ready. He's not ready to live consciously, to exist every day, the small I, the me, the father, the American, the man, the brother, the son these different roles, these different feathers in our caps, so to speak, these different faces or personas, these different aspects of everyday reality, these little moments that make up life, right? You know, that's living much more consciously as things come to us. It's like, oh, okay. It's really just recognizing that, yeah, you brought it up. 
yourself. You know, and it's like, okay, that's, you know, living by the law of assumption. So, one is not ready for that level of things to just be like riding the dragon, so to speak, right? And manifesting your dreams knowing you are God, right? Knowing it, knowing it. So, the, but that's not going to happen if you're not prepared, you know what I mean? You're not ready for that life if you're not prepared for it, prepared, actively prepared. The man who is not prepared for the conscious plunge into the assumption of the wish fulfilled and the faith that it is the only way to the realization of his dream, he's not yet ready to live consciously by the law of assumption, right? So we have to listen to this stuff again and again or read it again and again or set reminders, whatever it is. We need to prepare actively engagement, active engagement. We have to prepare for the conscious plunge into the assumption of the wish fulfilled and the faith that it is the only way to the realization of our dreams, you know, or else we're not yet ready to live consciously by the law of assumption. Although there's no doubt that we all do anyway, conscious or unconscious, right? So for you who accept this principle and are ready to live by consciously assuming that your wish is already fulfilled, the adventure of life begins. The actual adventure of life begins. To reach a higher level of being, you must assume a higher concept of yourself. That sounds like an adventure to me. That's more than just sitting down, letting the life waste away. You're literally seeing ascension in your life. You're seeing your, your godliness. You're seeing yourself become more and more. You're seeing the manifestation of your dreams, your goals, your desires. And you're reaching higher levels of being, right? Assuming higher concepts. To reach a higher level of being, you must assume a higher concept of yourself. So it is this cycle, this regenerative cycle. You keep on getting further validation by the wish being fulfilled, by the manifestation of yourself becoming more, becoming that higher concept, that more virtuous you, that, you know, everything that you came here to be, you know what I mean? As that. It, it, it's almost like, a, I suppose, a, a self-generative dynamic, isn't it? A non-linear sort of thing, almost an exponential growth, like Jordan Peterson speaks of, those little incremental changes, they build up over time, like interest on a, on a big, like mathematically, it's non-linear, but, you know, over time, staggering. If you will not imagine yourself other than what you are, then you remain as you are. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Wow. Missing the mark. That's what a sin is. Missing the mark. You came here in life for reasons. I don't think any of us want to miss the mark. I think we all want to have some sense of fulfillment of purpose, some some sense of accomplishment, of meaning, of connection in our own way, whatever that is, right? We don't want to die in sins. It has nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with that sort of what some outside conditional force is telling what's right or wrong, right? It's not about that. You yourself. <laughs> You know what's right for you. You know what's wrong for you. You know when you're screwing up. You know when you're not doing things that contribute to your goals. You know when you've missed the mark and when your actions cause further missing of marks, right? If you do not believe that you are he, the person you want to be, then you remain as you are. Through the faithful, systematic cultivation of the feeling of the wish fulfilled, desire, which is in the now, becomes the promise, faith. It becomes the promise of its own fulfillment. 
through the faithful, systematic cultivation. You got to work at it. Be, have faith; it'll happen. Be systematic. Do it. Practice it. Get it happening. Right through the little moments of everyday life. Right. That's my spin on it. But yeah. Right. The assumption of the feeling of the wish fulfilled makes the future dream a present fact. And I think that works that way not only because if you're living it emotionally in your heart in your mind even your mind synaptically and even the muscles man they've even like wired people up you know it starts to become reality cortisol level norepinephrine there's different <laughs> it's not even psychological although we could we could we could potentially say psychosomatic but it's real it's happening hormones neurotransmitters i mean it's happening on a very visceral level believing it to be so so even on that level, it makes sense. Like, it makes sense on every single level. It simply is. So therefore, it becomes a present fact on many levels, in many ways, in many areas, through many filters, many layers of meat, different arrangements of the one cause substance. Right? I'm a man, I'm a father, I am an American, you know, you're not defining different I am's, you're defining different concepts or arrangements of the one cause substance, the one I am, right? So, the assumption of the feeling of the wish fulfilled makes the future dream a present fact in a multitude of ways.